Greetings to all. Welcome to Future Officers Academy. Today we are going to see the daily current affairs of July 3rd. The topics we are going to discuss today are the first topic is water hyacinth in Kerala's Vemanadu Lake, which comes under prelims perspective. The next is advanced medium combat aircraft prototype expected to be ready by 2028 to 2029, which comes under GS3 paper science and tech. The third topic is on improving rural mobile connectivity, which comes under GS3 science and technology. The next topic is Iran limited democracy that is an unlimited theocracy which comes under GS2 international relations. Next topic is Minami Torshima Island which comes under location of news in today's topic. So these are all the topics we are going to discuss today. Our first topic is about water hyacinth in Kerala's Vemanadu Lake. So, water hyacinth, its scientific name is Potidria crassipus. So, it is the scientific name of water hyacinth. It is an invasive species to invasive species and it is native to the South Africa. The plant has neutralized itself in many parts of the world. Well, the plant has some uses too. When it covers the entire surface of the water body, it becomes a threat to aquatic biodiversity. The macrophytes like water hyacinth can be outrightly placed a harmful or useful category. Water hyacinth act as a water purifier by removing heavy metals from water when present in small quantities. However, the plant is prolific spreader and when it covers the entire surface of the water body, it does not allow the sunlight to penetrate the water and also starts depleting ocean. This leads to death of aquatic animals and plants which in turn decomposes and further reduces oxygen level. The presence of water hyacinth indicates that there are high, high nitrogen levels in the water. It is a symptom of an underlying problem and how the water nutrients behave. It also indicates a lack of effective competing factors to prevent the growth. With this water hyacinth, we have to know about the lake Vemanar. Vemanar is the largest lake in the lake uh, Kerala and also the longest. So, largest and the longest. It is also known as Vemanadu, Vemanad, Kayal, Vemanad, Kol, Punnamada Lake in Kuttanadu, next Kochi Lake in Kochin. So this lake has four sources four river sources the first river is meenachal the next is achankovil third pamba fourth manimala so these are the lakes have its sources in four rivers. So it is spreaded from the Arabian Sea by a narrow barrier island and it is popular backwater stretch in Kerala. Vallam Kali that is a narrow trophy boat race is a snake boat race held every year in the month of August in Vemanadu Lake. In 2002, it was included in the list of wetlands of international importance as defined by the Ramsar Con Convention. The government of India has identified the Vemanadu wetland under the National Wetlands Conservation Program. The Kumarokam Birth Sanctuary is located on the east coast of the lake. So, that's all from this topic. Our next topic is about Advanced medium combat aircraft prototype expected to be ready by 2028 to 29. 
the defense ministry is planning to involve the private sector significantly in the design and development of the indigenous fifth generation fighter aircraft the advanced medium combat aircraft that is amca the amca design is ready with the first prototype expected by 2028 to 29 and production being by 2032 to 33 Here induction is targeted for 2034, with the private sector collaboration models to be finalized with six months. An expression of interest that is has been issued and industry response have been received. It is a crucial as India's only fifth generation fighter amid global advancement, especially with China J. 20 FG FA development in. Tibet. It was sanctioned by the Cabinet Committee on Security in March. The AMCA is 25 ton twin engine stealth aircraft with internal weapons bay and divertless supersonic intake. It features an internal payload capacity of 1,500 kg, external payload of 5,500 kg, and 6,500 kg of internal fuel. Hindustan Aeronautics Limits is the production agency and has commenced manufacturing activities. Now we have to know about the fifth generation fighter jets. The fifth generation fighter jets are designed to carry out range of missions such as air-to-air combat and the ground attack. They have plain surface, especially shaped exhaust nozzles and engines located in the plane's body to hide heat signatures. They also have the special radars to detect the aircraft's own radar emission only a few countries have built a fifth generation stealth fighter aircraft the list of aircraft currently in service includes F22 Raptor and F35A Lightning two of the US and the Chinese J20 Mighty Dragon and the Russian Sukhoi Su57 so that's all from this topic our next topic is about improving rural mobile connectivity the article discusses the development and challenges of cellular networks this standard aims to provide affordable broadband access to the rural areas through innovative network architecture addressing the digital divide in developing countries like india now we have to know about fundamentals of cellular network a cellular network such as a 5g network includes a set of network equipment connected by communication links they work together to move data between different devices and to other networks example the internet a cellular network can be divided into two sub networks the first one is the access network access network that is an the next one is the core network that is cn the access network includes base stations that provide wireless connectivity to mobile devices within a specific area that is known as coverage area these base stations are typically seen as towers with antenna boxes on top and are installed throughout the region by a network operator next the core network is different from the access network as it contains equipment that connects to other network like the internet this core network is centrally located and connected to b stations through optical fiber links called backhaul backhaul so this core network is crucial for maintaining user mobility a key feature of cellular networks now we have to know about challenges the challenges of mobile connectivity in rural connectivity in india as even though cellular networks seem to be everywhere their availability and use different greatly between urban and rural areas especially in developing countries like india according to recent data from telecom regulatory authority of india urban areas have a tele density of only 100 27 percentage meaning each person on average has more than one mobile connection in contrast rural areas have a tele density of only 58 percentage 
it is in urban this is in rural so rural we have tail density of only 58 percentage meaning that only about half the rural population has a mobile connection this shows a clean urban rural digital divide a common issue in many developing countries now what are all the reasons for lack of sufficient mobile connectivity in rural areas one major reason for the lack of cellular networks in rural areas is lower income for rural residents making mobile services too expensive for many additionally rural areas have low population densities scattered populations in villages separated by large empty space and remote locations for instance bringing fiber infrastructure to a distant village in the himalayas is neither cost effective nor easy these rural characteristics for, call for a communication system that can cover large areas efficiently however most research and development in cellular network focus on urban needs in development countries like achieving high data rates and low latency with 5g as a result rural connectivity rural connectivity remains significantly behind with this we have to know about middle mile network now what is middle mile network so the iee 2061 standard proposes the use of multi hop wireless middle mile network to extend connectivity to areas where optical fiber links are not available the multi hop wireless middle mile provides cost effective connectivity over long distance eliminating the need for a costly and difficult to deploy optical fiber while the core network supports user mobility many rural users maintaining stationary therefore a direct internet connection from a and bypassing c the cn is the more efficient for the users so the network allows direct communication between nearby users within the access network and avoiding the core network similar to traveling directly between two towns without detouring through a distancity with this we have to know about bharat project sorry bharat net project bharat net is the world's largest optical fiber based rural broadband connectivity project it is excluded by bharat broadband network limited that is bb nl a special purpose organization under the telecom ministry it is an ambitious rural internet access program an initiative by the union government under its digital india now what are the futures of the benefits of this bharat net using optical fiber the program is intended to bring broadband internet connectivity to each the more than 2.5 lakh gram panchayat across the country the government intends to provide a minimum of 100 mbps bandwidth at each gram panchayat through bharat net so that everyone especially those in rural india can access online service as part of bharat net project the center will also provide last mile connectivity through wifi and on other means and setting up wifi hotspot in all gram panchayat now what are the progress have been done so far the initial scope of project was cover 2.5 lakh gram panchayat in the country with optical fiber by august 2021 however the deadline was missed around 1.94 lakh villages have been connected at present and the rest of the villages are expected to be connected in next 2.5 years the project progress was affected due to lockdown movement restriction due to covid pandemic in the union budget 2022 to 23 the government extended the project deadline to 2025 so that's all from this topic our next topic is about iran limited democracy unlimited theocracy here the erbat ebrat museum in tehran formerly notorious Savak torture center now serves as a stark reminder of Iran's oppressive past under the Shah's regime.
It symbolizes the transition from monarchical rule to clerical governance post-1979 Islamic revolution amidst ongoing political tensions and social unrest. With this, we have to know about Ebrad Museum. The Ebrad Museum in Tehran was once the headquarters of Sawak, the Shah's secret police, infamous for torture and repression. Built in 1930s by German engineers, it symbolizes the brutality of Shah's regime, showcasing cells, torture wings, and prisoner sculptures. How it is converted into a museum? It is converted into museum in 2002 by Iranian authorities to highlight the atrocities of Shah Monarch. It serves as a reminder of the oppression that leads to 1979 Islamic Revolution aimed at liberating Iranians from royal dictatorship. Now, what is the political landscape post-revolution? It promises of liberation. The Islamic regime has faced protest, accusing it of similar repressive tactics Water turnout into elections has declined sharply with a record low such as 39.9% in 2021 questioning the regime legitimacy. Now what are the structure of Iran in political system? Iran political system combines elected bodies, bodies like president, parliament, with unelected ones controlled by the clergy, the supreme leader holds ultimate authority over both political and spiritual matters with no fixed term. The, what are the role of clerical authority? The guardian council appointed by the supreme leader which candidate and oversees elections influencing legislative process. The assembly of experts elects and oversees the supreme leader ensuring continuity and clerical control. Now the political division is between the principalist versus reformist. Iran's political spectrum includes principalists that is conservatives supported by the clergy and reformists advocating internal reforms. Elections often highlight tensions between factions influencing national policies and reforms. Now what are the challenges and stability? Iran faces internal dissent, economic crisis and ongoing protests challenging the regime's stability. Despite challenges, Iran's leadership seek to maintain stability and continuity under clerical rule. The Awad Museum stands as a stark reminder of Iran's turbulent history from monarch oppression to clerical grievance. The political system Shaped by the revolution of 1979, continues to evolve international tensions and external pressures. So that's all from this topic. Our next topic is about Minami Torshinha Islands. In recently, researchers found a mother load of around 2030 million metric tons of minerals crucial to making electric car batteries on a seabed of Minami Torshima Island. Minami Toshima Island, also known as Marcus Island, is an isolated Japanese coral atoll in the northwestern Pacific. It is the easternmost territory belonging to Japan and only Japanese territory on Pacific plate. Past the Japan Trench, it lies 1950 kilometers southeast to the central Tokyo. The shape of the island is close to the equilateral triangle. It is formed by a raised coral reef which is about 2 km on each side and 6 km around. The terrain is flat with a maximum altitude of 9 meter but outside of the reef is a steep cliff that about 1000 meter deep and surrounding waters go down to about 6000 meter at their deepest. The climate pattern here is located in a transitional zone between tropical and subtropical climates. The islands has oceanic climate with an average annual temperature around 25.6 degrees Celsius. The exclusive economic zone based on the baseline of 
Minami Torishima Island is some lakhs kilometer larger than the Japan's land area. So that's all from this topic. Now, now we'll see the mapping. The major physical divisions of India and the islands of India. Here in major physical divisions of India, we have the Himalayan mountains. Northern Plains, third, the Peninsular Plateau, fourth, the Indian Desert, and fifth, the Coastal Plains. And finally, the islands. So these are all the major divisions of physical divisions of India. In map, we could find first the northern mountains. These are all the northern mountains. Next, the northern plains, the green areas. These are all the northern plains have been seen. The next is the great Indian desert. This is the great indian desert area next the deccan plateau this region is called as deccan plateau next the coastal plains the area which covers near all the coastal areas of india these are all the coastal plains and finally the islands so that's all from this map our next map is Lakshadweep Islands. Lakshadweep group of islands are situated in the Arabian Sea. It is a group of 36 islands. But four islands are the most important which includes the first one is Amini. Next. Kavariti. Next, Minikoi and fourth, Agati. So these are the major four islands seen. Now what are the structure? These islands have part of reunion, volcanism, the base of the islands provided by volcanic lava. The entire Lakshadweep islands are made up of coral deposits. So, with this we have to know about some of the important channels. The first is 8 degree channel. The 8 degree channel separates the Minikoi from Maldives and the 9 degree channel separates Minikoi from the main Lakshadweep. Now, we have to know about population also. The population of these islands is 68,000 with the Muslim majority but the Minikoi has the Christian majority. The entire indigenous population of the islands is scheduled tribe but the tribes are not named. The majority of people speak Malayalam. Now the political system. They, these islands were earlier known as Laka Dive. Earlier known as Laka Dive. Minikoi and Amini Devi Islands, Lakadai. Minikoi and Amin Devi Islands. The name of Lakshadweep was adopted in 1973. Lakshadweep Islands is union territories under the administrator control of Lieutenant Ghana. Karavati is the administrative capital of Lakshadweep. It is under the jurisdiction of Kerala High Court. With this, we have to know about other important islands. First island is Sri Harikota Island. First is Sri Harikota Island. It is located in Andhra Pradesh between Bay of Bengal and Pulikar Lake. Sri Harikota is one of the ISRO satellite launching stations. Vila Island. Next is Wheeler Island or Abdul Kalam Island. It is located off the coast of Odisha. It serves as a missile testing site. Third is 
Pamban Island. It is situated in the Gulf of Mannar between India and Sri Lanka. This island is covered with white sand. Next, Majoli Island. It is located in Assam. It is a river line island situated in Brahmaputra River. It is the largest river line island in the world. The island under severe ecological threat due to extensive soil erosion of its banks. It is home of Assamese neo Vaishnavite culture. The next is Dew Island. It is located on the coast of Kathiawar. It is famous for the historical Dew Fort built by the Portuguese and the beautiful beaches. Next, with this note, we have to know about Daman is not an island. Next, fifth one, Sagar Island. It is located in Ganga Delta in the Bay of Bengal. It is an important place for Hindu pilgrimage. Next, finally, we'll have Pumdas Island. or floating islands. They are located in Manipur on Loktak Lake. It is the part of Kabul Lamjo National Park. It is famous for Shanghai that is breed of deer. So that's all from our today's topics. To read this document you can visit our website. Our website link have been provided in the description. To get more daily current affairs videos follow our YouTube channel also our Telegram channel. Thank you.